check out this abrasion holography that I just did. Many years ago, I think it was back in the early 90s, I remember seeing a paper by Bill Beatty about abrasion holography that he kind of discovered by accident by observing some buff marks in, uh, in a car's bonnet. Now, uh, he, he wrote a paper that I'll, uh, I'll link in the details below, um, talking about how to make it and uh, how it all works. I mean, it's actually quite simple. But essentially, you can see down here, I've got my you know, drawing of what I wanted to make the hologram of, in this case, just my initials. And I don't know if you can see there in the specular reflection, but with a compass, I've made a whole bunch of points. I've traced an arc around... A whole bunch of points in the particular shape that I was interested in projecting so you can see there's a whole bunch of scratches here. And those scratches act like little annular um, semicircular mirrors that reflect a point source, in this case my pseudo point source is a light bulb and um, there's all kinds of reflections as well it's making it not particularly um, well, not a particularly good point source, it's also not very far away but the sun is, is not out today so uh, that's the best we can do but well, I could probably put a pinhole in front of it, but anyway, and you can see the plastic. This is just a CD case that I've taken the uh, taken the front panel off. It's uh, polystyrene, but uh, I've also done some on metal, which I'll show you in a minute. As you can see here, um, the effect is actually quite good in in uh, in person, and the camera has issues dealing with the dynamic range and um, you know other problems with generally being not. I mean, it's fairly bright actually, but. It's not as bright as the direct source, and you can see when you get the, the main reflection there, you can't really see it terribly well, but your eyes can do a much better job. The, uh, the Z encoding, the depth encoding, comes from the radius of the lines, of the, um, the arcs, so you can actually make full three-dimensional holograms that, um, that do the parallax thing while you look at them, and uh, they're quite convincing. They're, it's... Uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. It took me about five minutes to get it to work when uh, when I finished reading the article. So it's something you can do quickly yourself. Um, it's super easy, and you should give it a try because it's heaps of fun. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm thinking that there's a lot of ways you can improve this too. In particular, I was uh, I was trying aluminium flashing, which I'll show you here. This didn't work terribly well because it's not very flat. But you can see there, I've got ZAY. At, then they're at all at different depths, but the as you can see the flashing is is just a piece of flashing that I pulled straight off the the reel, and it's uh, I didn't beat it flat or anything, so it's a bit crap. But it's not too bad. You can see the cue there. I, I tried to increase the contrast by painting the surface black first, and then scratching lines through it. But I wasn't very consistent with my depth, and uh, again the the distortion of the surface kind of ruins the effect. But it does look like with um, you know, a bit of actual engineering as opposed to a quick hack you could make some quite interesting art doing this it should actually be possible to instead of having um, these annular semicircular cross-section reflectors scratch, you know, it's a scratch in a surface you could probably build it out of polished metal um, wire as well so you could, you could possibly build quite a large one that would work outdoors as an art installation uh, other ideas? I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be that difficult to write some software to generate this pattern automatically and print it out using photolithography at quite high resolution. Um, it should also be fairly easy to build a robot to make these scratches in a metal surface or a piece of plastic as well, uh, which could be a lot of fun. You could certainly um, yeah, it's laborious to do this. I mean, it does take five or ten minutes per letter, and depending on how many points you give it. But you could quite, uh, you could quite easily, you know, hand that all over to a machine of some description, either software that produces a, uh, a photo plotter output that you can transfer onto the metal, or um, maybe a machine that directly scratches it with a stylus. I was also wondering if you could. Uh, do like a random dot thing, I and mean, this is all this is all arcs. Obviously, I don't know if there's other basis that you could use for for doing this. I need to investigate that a bit more mathematically, but it, uh, very simple, super simple. Give it a go. Alrighty, that's a quick one. Um, haven't been doing a whole lot lately because, as many of you probably know, I am moving to Seattle very soon. I just got my visa. With my visa being um, officially 
okay I can uh, I can go there pretty much any day now I've just got some other things that I need to settle here before I move and yeah I'll be working at Valve Corporation very soon alrighty see you later bye